Hi there, I'm Skaji and I'm a professional tarot nerd. I'm glad you're here. Today we're going to take a look at one of my spreads from my Wheel of the Year series. This series of spreads is based on the eight seasonal celebrations of many pagan, Wiccan, and witchcraft traditions. These celebrations are solar in nature and that they relate to the movement of the sun throughout the year. For more information on the Wheel of the Year, check out my upcoming video on just that very topic. The winter solstice spread takes a look at the time beginning with Samhain and culminating with the winter solstice. I should point out here, I guess, that since in, I'm in the northern hemisphere, I will be speaking from that perspective. Our southern hemisphere friends experience the passage of the seasons differently. That I mention that upcoming video, I'll be discussing that weirdness in more depth there. Neat, huh? The days begin to grow shorter at the autumnal equinox around September 21st. And this marks the beginning of autumn, or fall if you like the short words. The days shrink until the winter solstice around December 21st, which marks the beginning of winter. Now on the wheel of the year, what I'm calling the winter solstice season begins after Samhain, around Halloween depending on how you calculate it and culminates on the winter solstice itself. Imagine, if you will, that you're a farmer. And you're a good farmer, and that's handy. That's handy because if you weren't, you might not have produced enough, well, enough produce to feed you through the winter. And that's a scary thought. As the days grow shorter and colder, it might seem that warmth and light have abandoned you. And you, my farmer friend, don't have all the conveniences I do. You can't light a room by flicking a switch. If it's cold in your house, you can't simply adjust the thermostat. You, my friend farmer, have to keep the home fires burning, as they say, and in the darkness of winter, you might begin to plead for the return of light and warmth, for the return of the sun. And that's just what many of our ancestors from around the world may just have done. We can see some evidence of this with surviving fire and sun festivals during winter all over the place. A quick internet search can point you at such celebrations around the winter solstice such as Christmas, Hanukkah, Soyal in the Hopi Nation, Yalda from Persia, Saturnalia in Rome, St. Lucia's Day in Scandinavia, Dongji in China, Toji in Japan, and before I forget, Yule. And this is the short list. I'm sure there are many many more. So you, my friend, might just go out into the cold on the longest night of the year and light yourself a really big fire. Why not? It's cold after all. And maybe your really big fire might just remind the sleepy old sun that it has a job to do. I remember when I was little at each Christmas time my mother had these little nightlight things which looked like candles and she'd put those in all the windows. And thinking back on it, I wonder if that practice wasn't a tradition related to that big old fire in the cold. During this time, many have already busy lives made busier by increased family and social obligations. It can be difficult to balance all this and not find ourselves run totally ragged. This spread takes a look at all this and might just provide some advice. Card one shows us our starting place. Card two hints at social life and obligations during this time of the year, while card three provides advice on managing it all. Card four represents our personal life, and card five provides advice for this area. And finally, card six represents the end of the season, culminating with the winter solstice. When we talk about starting places and ends of seasons, there are a couple of ways to think about this. We can see these cards as representing us, or the person for whom the reading is about, and our situation and attitudes. Or we can see these cards as representing the energy prevalent at the time. What does that even mean, energy? Well, think of it kind of like the weather, only, you know, not actual weather. It means the ebb and flow of the vagaries of our lives that we have to deal with, much like we have to deal with the actual weather. How you consider the context of these positions will depend on you. Find that interpretation that resonates most with you. 
So now let's take a look at an example. For today, I'm using the Tarot Mucha deck, or Mucha. Well, Mucha. He was an artist, sort of the godfather of the Art Nouveau movement. It's a very beautiful deck. Um, and for our starting place, I'm using the energy model here. And as we start to lay these cards out, it's a good idea if they're all in the frame now in a sense of full disclosure I will go ahead and let you know that I did make sure these were all turned up right I'm not reading reversals today although I do um, read reversals in my daily practice but this will just give us a good idea So, when we start with the solstice season, we have here our Eight of Wands. With that Eight of Wands, Wands is that element of fire. That's got a lot of energy in it. And in a lot of decks, we can see something like we see here with a lot of energy moving around. Those Wands seem to be flying through the air. And our young friend here in the image almost looks startled, like there's a lot going on. Well, that's a reasonable starting place for a lot of folks this time of year who uh, may be getting busier preparing for all of those family things. Remember, this starts right after Halloween, so here in the U.S., Thanksgiving comes next, and then there's a lot of family stuff going on, a lot of things moving around. And for those social aspects, you know, our obligations. We have this Ace of Pentacles. Well, pentacles, element of earth stuff. It's real world things a lot of times. And the Aces often represent those beginnings or the, the starting places. So what we see here is it's time to get to work. Time to get moving. Um, things to be done. But the advice on that is confusing as everything may be, and with the, the slog sometimes of, of doing the preparations and, and taking care of the things and going to the places, with our Ace of Cups, here we have that overflowing emotional sense. That's cups, water, emotion. So we just need to keep an open heart about it. In doing things, it's sometimes easy to forget the, the why we do the things. And if we're doing stuff for others, to help others, to bring others joy, it's a good idea to remember that. For our personal stuff, here we have the moon. And the moon card often represents those inner hidden aspects of ourselves, our own psychology. Some things to consider during this time. Maybe take some time for ourselves to kind of get more in touch with us. And the advice on that with our Knight of Pentacles, again, we have that earth element. And the Knights, I see them as the action heroes of the tarot deck. Normally, they're pretty quick. They're fairly strategic in their thinking, mounted soldiers and all. But the Knight of Sword, our Knight of Pentacles, he's the, I see him as the slowest of the Knights. He's not in a huge hurry, but he's practical. He's down to earth, and he's, a, he's like a train, slow to get going and hard to stop. So the advice on that stuff is stick with it. Don't be in a hurry as we spend time with ourselves, and we take some time to understand ourselves better, but don't be in a hurry to get it done. And at the end of the season, with everything going well, keeping an open heart, spending some time with ourselves and giving ourselves time. We have the Ten of Cups. And as the Ten is the culmination of the Minor Arcana, the Pip cards, the numbered cards, everybody's happy. There's lots of cups. 
And so it's, um, it's almost a revival of sorts at the end of that. And there you have it. A look at my winter solstice spread. I hope you've enjoyed the time you spent here. And if you have, please like and subscribe. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching. I'm Skaji. Safe journeys.